Good afternoon, fellow space professionals. My name is Timothy Fukuyama, and this is my assessment of the role of government in ORCA, or Orbital Rendezvous and Centrifugal Assist, for Module 3.3. As stated in my previous presentations, I envision the primary customers to be government entities such as NASA or ESA, seeking ways to proliferate deep space probes for research in an affordable manner. I've mentioned venture capitalists interested in conducting asteroid survey missions for potential future harvesting operations, but that is outside the scope of the government roles focus for this brief. Dr. Aldrin did a fantastic job of building out this chart to outline the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats inherent within the United States and SIS. In the interest of not attempting to sound like I could do a better job than Dr. Aldrin, I will instead take his points and reflect on which, if any, have a direct impact to ORCA development and operation. Obviously, that massive U.S. government investment in space provides opportunities for funding new launch or launch assist systems such as ORCA. The high R&D costs associated with a brand new idea that's never been utilized before necessitates taking advantage of such capital. Outside of direct government funding, the strengths of U.S. financial institutions as projected by the federal government provides further options for funding. Domestic political paralysis, or even the phenomena of incoming political cabinets completely reversing guidance and focus for their subordinate agencies, such as NASA, absolutely leads to the volat volatility of relying on government funding for development and contracting customers. Furthermore, since ORCA is relying on customers to get their own payloads into LEO utilizing primary small launch vehicles, the collapse of said market could have long-reaching impacts on the long-term viability of ORCA. The opportunities outlined by Dr. Aldrin don't necessarily align with ORCA's mission, so I will move on to threats. I already touched on the collapse of small launch, so I'd instead like to lightly touch on the concept of Chinese competition. China's emphasis on increased space research and increasing their permanent presence in space will always pose somewhat of a threat to Western space operations and commercialization. As seen in other global markets, the desire to drive down costs can lead to healthy competition, but it can also lead to cost undercutting. The potential for China to develop a competitive ORCA after acknowledging its viability cannot be ignored. This is my assessment of their European Union's NSIS from the documents that I could find. ESA cannot yet quite meet the funding afforded to NASA by the U.S. government, but being able to draw from the economies of several European nations helps to collectively increase available funding. As of 2023, there are even increased initiatives to increase commercialization and provide space support services, much like the U.S. began doing several years ago. From a weakness perspective, one of the primary economies, formerly part of the EU, the UK, has some undefined roles and responsibilities with regard to funding ESA projects. ESA also tends to have few launch customers due to their focus on supporting the European region exclusively outside of space research. Both opportunities are essentially offshoots of the Ukraine crisis, both due to the loss of Soyuz launches and the observed vulnerabilities of European communication satellites from hostile jamming and cyber attacks. ESA currently has some unaddressed launch deficits as they work to make up for the loss of the aforementioned Roscosmos contracts and the same threat of small launch market collapse. The European Union doesn't stand out as the largest and most advantageous customer for ORCA during R&D, but there are still some avenues to consider. The growing budget for ESA is a potential justification to secure some funding, especially with their growing focus on deep space exploration and research. Regional support is definitely a negative consideration for ORCA from evaluating the potential for individual European customers. As discussed with the US market, the collapse of small launch could be very problematic for ORCA. From a regulation perspective, ORCA will need to directly coordinate with several governmental entities that help manage and deconflict orbits for the thousands of vehicles already in space. In order to safely send payloads to various deep space trajectories, this coordination cannot be overlooked. As discussed earlier, government funding is essential to get ORCA R&D completed. Venture capital can certainly help, but definitely cannot solely support development costs and timelines. This is also why government research entities, primarily NASA, will serve as at least the initial primary customer base. Finally, ORCA cannot be developed in a vacuum, pun intended, but rather must be integrated early on into what the customers require from a technical and operational perspective.